Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. In the Holy Gospel for today, we hear echoes of what has been from the very beginning, of what is now, and what is to happen when Jesus is lifted up in our midst. He is always lifted up in the gospel on the cross, Christ the crucified, that we may look to him and live. We bring our hurts, our brokenness, our sin, our sorrow, our sin sickness to him today. As I say this theme for the sermon, as maybe you have heard the passage, John 3, 16, I know that there are people, maybe even in the church, who say, same old, same old. Can't he ever come up with something new? Maybe even complaining about the kind of same old, same old lessons and the same old, same old liturgy. Although we don't see the importance of what new means. New doesn't mean something unfashioned and disconnected from the past, but rather like what I look for when I go to the grocery store and go through the produce aisle. I look for fresh. The old can become fresh. Fresh is what it means. We don't use the gradual in the liturgy, but today's gradual says, we fix our eyes on Jesus and we receive fresh healing to our emotional scars, our hurting souls. And in this, the saving Lord brings joy and salvation, healing. Today, even our media experts tell us, well, that's your narrative. My narrative is this. Your story is different than my story. Our narrative is the Bible. From beginning to end, compressed and fulfilled in Jesus. The whole story comes down to John 3, 16. It's your story, who you are and whose you are. So that's why we fix our eyes on Jesus. That's our narrative, compressed and expanded. The liturgy that we have and the lessons all make that point, always blending the story of the Holy Spirit in new and fresh ways. Makes me think of little children in the kitchen with mom or dad. Maybe you've done this with your children. You've had the children come in to the kitchen and you get all the pots and pans out and you get the ingredients and what you're going to make and you let them play and bang the pots and pans around. It's just limitless curiosity, chaos, everything, and the children love it because there's a sense of something's going to come of this. Give me the rice, the baking flour, the baking soda, the dried noodles, the water, the eggs, the food coloring, put it all together, and then what do you come up with? Closer bond and friendship? Maybe something fresh out of the oven. If ever there is an image, that's an image for how Jesus is treating Nicodemus in the night. He's almost treating him with a playfulness. You, who are an expert of the law, don't know what it is to be born from above or born again. 
Don't you understand? Oh, come on, Nicodemus. You came here, in, oh yeah, in the middle of the night, right. John tells us this story because he wants the whole narrative beginning in John 1, in the beginning, was the Word, and the Word was God, which takes us back to, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth out of chaos. That's your narrative and my narrative. And wait for it, in a short order, the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory. The glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. For by grace are you saved through faith. It's not of your works, lest anyone should boast. It's the free gift of God. Yes, wait for it. And then in chapter 3, this Jesus tells us that everything can be transformed by the miracle of God's word just as it has been transformed in the whole story. The serpent is now the symbol of healing. Remember Genesis 3, where the serpent is the symbol of the wily, cunning tempter? But as we get into Exodus, what does Moses have as his staff? It's a staff that can become a serpent. And as the people of God, like us, in all time, who complain against God, what does God do with the symbol of the serpent? He transforms it again, lifts it high on a pole, and it becomes not the source of death, but the source of life. And Jesus snickers at Nicodemus, who comes in the middle of the night. He says, those who love the darkness will see the light. Yes, God sent the Son into the world in the likeness of our sin and death and lifted him up on the pole of the cross that where darkness seems to surround God's heart, there God shows light and his love. By his cross, the light has come into the world. Ephesians says it today, while we were dead in trespasses and sin, we were made alive through faith in Jesus Christ. God is always using something opposite. This last week, Billy Graham was lifted up, and as someone said within earshot of me, Will we ever have another Billy Graham? You know, his hallmark passage was John 3, 16. He said it in every sermon. John 3, 16. Yes, that is the heart of our story. Martin Luther himself lifted it up. He said, it's the gospel in a nutshell. One of my seminary professors made a great deal of that in Luther's preaching. John 3, 16 echoes from beginning to end in the Bible. But don't forget what Luther also said. Luther taught that God wears masks, masks that God in the theology of the cross masks himself in the opposites, light, in darkness, hope in hopelessness, love in lovelessness. Yes, that is how God comes to us. I sometimes check a blogger named Chad Bird. He wrote a wonderful blog recently, and he has said that that's still true, that God masks himself in opposites. God, who is lifted up in glory, is really, he says, the God of the cross, 
Thus, our joy in the glorious is not glorious by worldly standards. It is not found in big accomplishments, but in seemingly small gifts in our lives, like a full manger, an empty tomb. The brown bag of simplicities of life is how God packaged our life and our joys. Crucified shamelessly on the cross between two criminals, God reveals his love for criminals. If you go into chapter 4 of John, just after this one, here we meet a Samaritan woman at a well, another conversation about water and its meaning, meaning life to a high religious official who comes in the midst of the night to a woman, a sinful woman, who meets Jesus at high noon, an outcast known as a sinner. So you see the breadth and the depth of God's love for us. God is not out to impress us, give his love what appears to be something that the world will just be attracted to. No, God is out to give us faith, to sound the alarm. There's an emergency in your life and my life. The ambulance is coming for you today to give you healing, to give your hurts and your emotional scars some healing. C.S. Lewis wrote uh, some wonderful things called the screw tape letters in which Wormwood is a senior devil who instructs lesser devils to work on humans and their weakness. And he says, one of the weaknesses is same old, same old. I call it S-O-T. Wormwood boasts it's one of the most valuable things in the human heart, that horror, however it is, but it is a perversion of our joy when we say the same old thing and we get bored with God's goodness. We hang out with the same old God and don't expect anything new from the simple, ordinary things of our lives. Atheists today talk a lot about why doesn't God perform miracles? They haven't looked at the cross. The one who sanctifies our same old lives with his same old love through his same old spirit, call it old school, but it's new. New as this Easter is already today. New in the neighbor that you will meet this week. New. Yes, new. Nicodemus found it out. The Samaritan woman found it out. And our life resembles the whole story of God's love for the world. The Christian life is the all-sufficient work of God, especially in Jesus Christ. You can lead your life on that journey this week again. And we all remember that we do get caught in the rut, same old, same old, disenchantment, those kinds of sayings which we say to ourselves sometimes, I wasn't expecting to suffer, I wasn't expecting to hurt. We murmur against God like the children of Israel did, but God puts the pole up for us to be healed. God did not come into the world to condemn you. God came into the world to love you to the end, to give healing to your mixed up emotions, your emotional struggles. He forgives and releases you and me. Yes, our world is mixed up. 
But God is bringing something new out of this world, just like children in the kitchen. We're not playing make-believe. Where this is the real story, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, bringing to us healing and eternal life. Amen.